Hi friends, this is Miss Tara with another edition of Awesome Inventions. This week we're talking about medical inventions, more specifically, one that we use all the time. The boo-boos that changed the world, a true story about an accidental invention, really, by Barry Wittenstein, illustrated by Chris Sue. We are talking about how this couple invented the Band-Aid. Here we go. Once upon a time, in 1917 actually, a cotton buyer named Earl Dickens Dixon married his beloved Josephine, and they lived happily ever after. The end. Actually, that was just the beginning. The newlyweds expected to live in a quiet, quiet life in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Instead, Earl and Josephine ended up changing the world, one boo-boo at a time. You see, Josephine was accident prone. She often bumped and bruised herself while working around the house. That was nothing compared to how often she injured herself in the kitchen. Ouch! When she sliced and diced an onion, she sometimes sliced her finger, too. Boo-hoo! When she grated cheese, she sometimes grated her knuckle. Arg! She lifted a hot pot off the stove, and sometimes she burned her hand. After Josephine winced in pain, she quickly grabbed a rag to stop the bleeding. But with bulky towels between her fingers, it was even harder for Josephine to hold a knife. She became even more accident-prone. Impossible, you say? It's true. Josephine's clutchiness had become a bloody problem. Every night when Earl came home from work, he looked forward to talking with Josephine and eating the wonderful meal she had prepared. That was until he saw his beloved's hands. Yikes! Her cuts might get infected. He had to help his new bride. Earl's father was a doctor, so Earl knew a little bit about boo-boos and bandages. And luckily, he worked for a company that manufactured hospital supplies. Earl knew that there had to be a solution, but what was it? Earl thought while he shaved in the morning, maybe if I... Earl thought while he bought cotton in the afternoon, then I could. And Earl thought some more while he lay in bed at night, and that would solve... Finally, a light bulb went off over his head. I've got it, Earl yelled with excitement, waking Josephine. What have you got, she asked. The bloody solution, of course, Earl replied. The next morning, Earl tried out his idea. Step one, he took a long piece of adhesive tape and laid it on the kitchen table, sticky side up. Step two, Earl cut small squares of sterile gauze and stuck them on the tape every few inches. Step three, he placed a material called crinoline on top of the adhesive tape to keep the whole strip sterile. It's perfect, Earl said proudly. Now all Josephine had to do was cut off a piece of the longer strip and put it on. She didn't need anybody's help. She only needed one hand. It worked. At last they lived happily ever after. The end. But wait, here comes the part about Earl and Josephine and how they changed the world. Earl guessed there were probably hundreds, possibly even thousands of people who could benefit from his new invention. Earl and Josephine thought about making the bandages themselves, but they soon realized it was too big a job. Earl told one of his co-workers about it, and the co-worker encouraged Earl to meet with the company's president. At first, Earl's boss, James Johnson, wasn't quite sure Earl's idea was good enough. Earl demonstrated how easy it was to put the bandage on. Then Mr. Johnson saw his own light bulb. The company agreed to produce and sell the product. They combined the words bandage and first aid to create a clever name, Band-Aid. Now Earl and Josephine would surely live happily ever after because Band-Aids were guaranteed to be an instant success. And with that, we have come to the end. Thank you and good night. Oops, not yet. Sorry. That first year, Band-Aids were made in a factory. It was a slower-than-slow process. Only a small number could be manufactured by hand. They came rolled up and were 18 inches, 18 ridiculous inches long, and 3 ridiculous inches wide. And they still had to be cut into pieces. Earl, Josephine, and Mr. Johnson had high expectations, but the Band-Aid boxes collected dust, ignored and unwanted. A few years later, the company invented a machine that could mass-produce thousands of bandages. Instead of the users having to cut them up, each one was ready to go. Band-Aids were now about three inches long and an inch wide, and they were cute too. Each one had a little red string to pull in order to open the paper wrapper. Success! Band-Aids flew off the shelves. The end! 
Not really. Unfortunately, even with the cute red string and the convenient size, the public wasn't sold on the idea. Mr. Johnson knew there had to be a solution. What happened next was truly a stroke of genius. The company decided to give the band-aids away. Mr. Johnson wondered who needed self-adhesive bandages the most, and the light bulb went off again. The Boy Scouts, of course. All those fall-down, climb-up, scratched elbows, scraped knees boys got plenty of cuts, and it didn't take long before the mothers of those rough-and-tumble boys saw how handy the little bandages were. That did it. Earl and Josephine's invention was a smash. During World War II, the company sent millions of free band-aids to the brave soldiers fighting overseas. In the years that followed, band-aids were made in different sizes, colors, and designs. Some even had pictures of cartoon characters on them. And that continues to this day, all over the world. From boisterous hot dog vendors in Brooklyn, fancy French winemakers, tired taxi drivers in Denmark, and English bobbies on bicycles, to daredevil skateboards in Saskatchewan, king crab fishermen in Alaska, sweaty Ugandan soccer players, and applauding audiences at the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow, the sounds of ay, wah, and ouch still echo, but not for long. Because soon those snivels and sobs of pain are silenced by Earl and Josephine's accidental boo-boo invention. That is the happiest ending of all. The end. Really. Author's note. We don't know exactly what Earl and Josephine said when Earl first figured out his idea for ready-made bandage. I invented the dialogue and details surrounding their interactions in this book. The Band-Aid is one of those little inventions that nobody thinks about much. You stick one on when you get a boo-boo and continue on your way. What is there to ponder? There's a whole lot involved. Every invention has a history. Things don't invent themselves, do they? Then who does? And when? And where and how? Inventions are invented because they fill a need. Such was the case of the Band-Aid. Josephine needed an easy way to stop the bleeding on her fingers and make sure her cuts didn't get infected. So Earl combined several ideas that resulted in the invention of the Band-Aid, a bandage that anyone could put on by themselves. It seems like such a simple idea, but think about all the elements that came together perfectly. Earl's father was a doctor, so Earl was somewhat familiar with the basics of cleaning cuts. Earl happened to work for a major manufacturer of medical supplies, and Earl's wife was accident-prone. Take any of those three away, and we can only wonder if the name Earl Dixon would mean anything to anybody in the world. The world needed a small, sterile adhesive bandage, and they would have been invented eventually, maybe by someone else at Johnson & Johnson, would have come up with the idea a few months later or years later. Or a competitor might have thought of them first, maybe even somebody halfway around the world. Earl was promoted to vice president, and he was eventually elected to the Johnson & Johnson Board of Directors. He was certainly rewarded with respect from his colleagues, and, was, and with a bigger salary, too. That was good news to the Dixons, who raised two boys. Earl died in 1961, when he was 68 years old. He didn't see the variety of design shapes and colors that Band-Aids come in now. Earl had no way of knowing how many companies would also think his idea was great and make their own brand of adhesive bandages. But he did know that the little idea made a big difference in people's lives. The Band-Aid celebrates its 100th anniversary in 2020. And in spite of all the global competition today, Band-Aid brand adhesive bandages are still the boo-boo king. So a really fun activity that you could do with this idea of inventing the band-aid is you could create your own design for a bandage. So I've got here, I uh, just googled band-aid coloring page and came up with this one and printed it off. And so this first design I chose, I used dot markers so you could paint uh, like I did with this one. This one I colored with regular markers and it's my Minecraft inspired one. And the third one that I made is pretty silly. And think about if you would want your bandage to have fuzzy balls on them, little craft puff balls. I had some red ones down in our art supply area, so I glued them on with some Elmer's glue. And I decided to make a little heart because I thought that was cute. You can think of 
the silliest band-aid design. You could draw characters on yours if you would like. You can put silly things on it like sand or salt or pieces of construction paper or cotton balls or anything weird. So you could have a contest that says this is the weirdest band-aid, this is the prettiest band-aid, this is the coolest band-aid, and etc. So I encourage you to design your own special band-aid brand of bandages. I hope you've enjoyed our book about the Boo Boo King and the invention of the band-aid. We'll see you next time. Bye friends.